Good morning, folks. Veteran observers know the drill. Large solar storm occurs, watch the technological effects over the following 24 hours, and the seismic upticks after that. But Earth isn't waiting. The electrical disruptions have begun, and so have the major earthquakes, more pronounced given the eight-month earthquake drought that has built up pressure. We'll look at Hurricane Irma as well, with less than 48 hours till U.S. impact, but let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Last 24 hours on our star remained relatively eruptive, but luckily the sunspot is heading towards the limb, and her ejecta has been tighter as well. Even as solar flares continue to fire, the CMEs fire further and further from Earth's direction. Also had the northeast filament ahead of the coronal hole there lift up and release. Surely that one is heading due north. Here's the real story. I've got my thinking positive cap on right now because the impact extended from what we could see last night might just be a merged CME after all. The speed kept rising throughout the night, and at peak the data makes a lot more sense for the last and final shock wave, at least we hope, because it triggered level 4 severe geomagnetic storms already that are cycling through and will almost certainly reverberate back into storm conditions today, even if no other impacts occur. If they do, well, let's have a look at the electric field potential from last night's event. This is an experimental data stream from NOAA showing that Chicago and much of the upper Midwest was under significant electrical stress. That wave is waning as well this morning, and while we'd normally be saying to watch for electrical disruptions to begin, we've got them already. Electrical explosions, outages, electrical fires that began as early as the first impact 36 hours ago, aviation, Telecom and the internet. If you don't use Google Docs, you can't imagine what a headache this going down actually was. Of course, first world problems, right? Folks, the long-term data suggests that normally we have to wait a few days after the geomagnetic storm for larger seismicity to prevail, but obviously that is not the case now. The sun is still down, so news is sparse. But deaths and damage have been reported, and so have tsunamis. Luckily, there are no measured tsunamis like what Japan saw in 2011 or Sumatra in 2004, but a major event, no doubt. Indeed, this one was predicted by a forecaster at QuakeWatch.net. Me. A little less than 10% of major global faults were alerted at red level, including the eventual earthquake zone. Looking back over the 10 and a half months of our model system, we are 75% at the magnitude 7 and above range, dropping into the 50s for magnitude 6, so it's about the big ones. Top US and Europe quakes, the top 4 overall, and 10 of the top 14 were all hits for the model, and again, we only use about 10% of the faults as we mentioned. Chapter 7 in our book is all about earthquake forecasting using these cosmic factors. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is available everywhere, but cheapest in PDF form over at otf.cells.com. It is worth noting that the previous chapter, Chapter 6, is the best of the book by far, and we also have descriptions in there of the hurricane effects of solar storms. A special video on that will be coming soon, but for now just look at what could be forecasted in terms of timing. When the biggest flare hit, that storm wasn't due at Florida until September 11th, but the western track and increased speed forecast came through, and now no models have it missing east of Florida and hitting Georgia and South Carolina first. Indeed, it is forecast to impact Florida on the 10th. Running European and GFS models here, both showing that 24 hours earlier impact on the 10th, and eyes open for that special video coming in a few days. There is only one week left to pre-register for Observing the Frontier 2018. My wife has given me permission to announce a few speakers on the last day of pre-registration, which is as exciting as it is a kick in the backside of an exercise in patience, but hey, she's the CEO. We've got Europe here because with all the focus elsewhere, I don't want this rainmaker sneaking up on anyone. Forecast shows severity in some locations. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, null school chemistry, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.